Hello, girlies, and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth, I'm okay. Hello, hello, everyone. I hope you're well. Lizzie is unwell. Why am I unwell? I don't think I'm unwell. Are you kidding me? Lizzie Are you kidding is, me? I just she's... literally, I am the wellest I've been in the matter of days. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. She literally, so she starts <laughs> texting me this morning and she goes, my shared notes don't work. My iPhone's broken. So I'm adding things to an email and I'm going to send you an email. And then she mass texting me saying, and I'm going to send you more topics in 30 minutes. Scratch that 50 minutes. And then she calls me after I had put the document together hours later and she goes, sorry, I'm going to be late. And I go, Lizzie, what are like, that's fine because whatever, like I'm always, it's hard to set up virtual for me. And she's like, well, yeah, I, I forgot about us. And I go, how did you forget about us? You literally just created hot topics for us this morning. And she goes, well, now I'm having to cancel an orange theory class. I'm like, you booked an orange theory class for the same time we're recording the podcast after you plan to produce the podcast. What's going on? Well, I had a migraine yesterday that was really bad. Like I like I get migraines pretty bad, honestly, but it's there's few and far between. But I like lose sight in one eye entirely and then it's mm. just a throbbing in the frontal lobes and I can't do anything and you know I left my vlog to the last second cuz I've been go go going. And I was like working on my vlog and I was like, "Huh, that's funny. I can't really see it anymore." <laughs> and then I was like, no. And then right when that hit in, my, Joe had ordered us a box spring to put the bed on instead of a bed frame so the dogs can't get underneath it. Mm -hmm. And um, I had to put that together. It was like a build your own box fucking spring. And I was oh. like, I had like one eye shut. Like James was helping me. I was like, I can't see you. Like it was bad. And then I just laid in bed and had like blackfish on in the background. You know, I'm sick when I'm watching blackfish. I don't even know what that is. Dude, it's a really sad, inspiring documentary about the uh, trafficking of orca whales that's been going on since like the 60s and is pretty fucked. And they're trafficking but, them to go to zoos or what? Yeah, to go to SeaWorld. So um, for forever, like since 1965, I think is when the first orca was captured in maybe British Columbia or Washington. I can't remember where, but they put this fish or this uh this orca in uh in captivity and started making him do performances mm -hmm. and um yeah since then they've just been going out stealing baby orcas from their mothers in the wild and orcas are very family-based very intelligent communicative community driven animals and they're locking them up in concrete pools and making them swim mm. for fish and it's just it's pretty disgusting but blackfish came out in 2010 and had a very successful result in which you know legislatures being passed now like in florida i believe recently legislation was passed that makes what they're doing with these orcas not okay and it puts a stop to the perpetual breeding of them in captivity and then like the taking of the babies from these moms and redistributing them around the country to make money off of them mm. um but there's still a lot of these orcas who live to be like 90 in the wild who have been in captivity for 40 30 50 years mm. so and now they, they probably don't know how to exist in the wild even if they were re-released it, well, it's an interesting thing. So just like, you know, we have cultures as human beings, these animals have cultures as well. So you've taken a baby from his mom 50 years ago and you've put him in a dark box for his entire life, Re like removed all the mental stimulation he had in the wild, all the relationships he had in the wild. And they have this part of their brain that's more developed than the human brain when it comes to emotions. So they're very emotionally uh, in touch animals and you put them back out into the wild, but they may not find their pod again, but they mm. might find a pod that they could, you know, happily coexist with. So when they are re-released into the wild, sometimes it's successful and, but they need to be, you know, monitored for life to some degree because they have become dependent upon uh, human interaction. And do you it's think sad. some of them are gay? Just curious. The whales? Mm -hmm. That's Just an curious. interesting, that's an interesting pivot. I'm sure they are. Honestly, I'm sure they are. <laughs> it's um I know the orcas are specifically female like uh like the the women are the alphas like bonobos and bonobos the way that you get in is you make a, a female higher cum. Hmm. But that's for the Joe Rogan podcast. We don't have to get into bonobos here. <laughs> well, do you notice anything different about me? Yeah, you shaved, you sick fuck. 
Isn't it gross? No, I mean, you kind of like, I feel like I need to take you to get a lip flip. <laughs> what? Yeah. What does that even mean? I just want a tiny bit more upper lip from you if you're not going to so have facial hair. You think I need to get it like <laughs> protruding? Just a little, a little lift. <laughs> just a little lift. You know what I mean? Well, I it's, lip nev- lip. it's never going to happen again. I'm not. Well, never you say never. You look so young. It's crazy. I think I'm fine looking older, though. Like, I, I would love rather that I tell look you that sad shit about whales. And you're like, but did you notice? I mean, it was too dark for the top for the first four minutes of the show. I think if it was 30 <laughs> minutes in, I could have gone down more of a journey with you. But I don't want people to <laughs> You've got your own trauma. You've got your own trauma. Let's talk yeah. about your face. <laughs> I'll do whatever I can for the well. Send me a link. Is there a GoFundMe? <laughs> Dude, honestly, I think we need to free Willie this shit. Like, we just got to bust up in there and fucking sprang him. You know what I'm saying? Jailbreak 2023. Let's get him. Yeah, because we, we're capable of holding those. I don't need how much. How many pounds does a well even weigh? I think it's like uh, eight tons. Mm, okay, well, enough well talk. Let's get back yeah. to me. <laughs> okay, yeah, back to you and your... And your <laughs> well, no, it's... <laughs> your under um, flip lip. It's in part apo- an apology to you because oh, I have sympathy for you and all women out there. I don't there. shave my face, you sick fuck. I, no, I'm not saying that you shave your <laughs> face, but as I transformed myself into Regina George for Shane's upcoming podcast, I realized just how much work it takes and how much effort it takes to settle in to record a podcast with a lot of hair with makeup on your face yeah. because you have to like I'm always annoyed that you're does my hair look good like this with the headphones I'm like Lizzie I don't fucking care but yeah. now I have sympathy for how that goes down because yeah it was a fucking nightmare I mean you should have had the sympathy because you've been psycho about your hair and you don't really have much I know, but then when you add the length, it is like one wrong move with your hair could make you look horrible the entire podcast. And so I'm sitting there like trying to get my angle right. And then I open my mouth and lipstick is all over my teeth. Mm -hmm. How would you feel? How would you feel if after realizing you had that lipstick on your teeth, you realized that the men sitting in front of you didn't fucking tell you. (laughs) And then later on, when they had beef with you, they rubbed it in your face. How bad would you feel? Now I feel pretty bad. And when I posted a photo on Snapchat about it, all the responses were about you. Justice for Lizzie. Thank yeah, you, no, audience. literally, they were all saying justice for Lizzie. Now you know what it's like for Lizzie. And I was like, well, yeah, I texted Lizzie about it. Okay, so I do feel bad. Mister never and- checks the DMs. Is responding to that. <laughs> I'll never know what it's like to menstruate, but just having the pressure of I did feel like it was a lot more pressure. Once you put on the additives, like me just being me, not having to put anything on. Once you start putting things on your face, then it feels like it has to be perfect. And then you feel like the outfit. So it's a nightmare. And I I feel for all you ladies out there. Thanks, dude. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. It just took you, what, like seven times in drag to figure it out? Mm, Yeah. (gasps) What's going on with you? I saw that you're you're doing what? Uh, What? Which (laughs) I'm I'm doing a lot, man. Well, it's (laughs) next on the document. (laughs) Next on the document. Um, oh, I found a way to manage my grief. Mm. What are you doing? Okay. So like this, uh, today I put a vlog up and honestly, dude, like I was having a mental breakdown about it. Cause I was like, I can't post this. <laughs> that's, a normally, just... that's a good sign normally. Well, no, I mean like uh, the reason why is cause I was like, oh, this is relentlessly sad and it's hopeless. <laughs> like usually I'm able to be like, you know, and this is happening but like let's be grateful for what we have and then in this one I was just like I don't know guys like I'm fucking sad and a little hopeless and like I had I had tried three times to film an introduction and you know that I'm a one take type of bitch and I, my Uh-oh. motto is if it's not on camera it's not meant to be and I shot an introduction for this three times you know I like cooked I'm like so distracted while I'm cooking I like had to go to the grocery store two times and like couldn't even vlog it like I'm dead behind the eye all of it was like a nightmare And then I, you know, was like, okay, I've been using my vlog as a place to be like working through this grief with jelly and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to be honest. And so I'm crying through the whole thing, like sobbing, crying uncontrollably, because that's what I've been like lately. And anyways, well, yeah, fast forward. Who cares? Fast (laughs) forward. No, I feel bad for you too. I do. I really do. No, I'm I'm joking. I do. I feel bad for Joe. I feel bad because all of us are going through it. I'm not the only no, person yeah. who lost Jelly, but um, I uh, I heard so. 
meditation is a big thing that you talk about doing as a way to ground yourself and keep yourself mentally healthy and fit for battle each day is mm -hmm. a way that I look at it. And I, I too have my version of meditating, but I, I kind of, I don't have a program around my meditation. And I feel often like when people say things like, oh, meditate, girl, it's like, bitch, what the fuck do you mean? Mm. Like, that is the most abstract shit I've ever heard. And it's not actionable. Until it transforms your life, it does sound woo woo and annoying. But the thing is, like, when I, when you, when a, as an uneducated person around meditation, I hear meditation and I just think someone's sitting there like, a fruit ninja and like oh thought slice thought slice like that's all they're doing they're just bashing ninja slicing off their thoughts and that doesn't work for me you know what i mean because then it's like I, I just can't do it i'm adhd i got a lot of fucking thoughts and i tell people most of my thoughts you know what i mean so um i was reading in a book the one thing you can do before you're able to clear your mind and you know goose fraba or what the fuck ever you can read a poem or a meditation or a prayer and focusing on those words specifically as you say it ground you and if you choose one with intention that can be really good for you and one of the ones i had never explored was this meditation called just for today and in this meditation, it's basically like a to-do list. Like, you know how you can buy one of those like journals on Amazon or what the fuck ever that it's like, give yourself a gold star when you brush your teeth. Like, give yourself a gold star when you make your bed. <laughs> this is this is like a version of that that's like soulfully nourishing and makes me realize that even though I'm sitting here and now and sad and fucked and don't know what to do, oh, I don't have to know what to do just for today. I just have to do what these things are. So the just for today meditation is a series of paragraphs of what I need to do just for today. And it mm. really took the pressure off of figuring things out. It's like, okay, yeah, I can be sad. And just for today, I'm going to not find problems in the world. Just for today, I'm going to do a good deed and not tell anyone about it, which is really hard for me because I love to tell people the good shit I'm doing. Just for today, I'm not going to put my negative shit onto somebody else. Mm. Just for today, I'm going to choose to be happy. Just those little things. And it's like, and I don't have to worry about doing this for more than a day. Because if I have to worry about doing this forever, my mind's going to explode. But just for today, I'm going to focus on these things. And it really shifted me out of my funk and was like, oh my God, that, that's, so, that's so helpful. Like, I'm going to do the things I don't want to do. I'm going to pick my shit up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to brush my teeth. I'm going to wash my face. Things that I'd stopped doing because the sadness has, has creeped into my real life. And it's like, yeah, I can say, well, I'm, I'm still doing my work. But it's like, well, you're a 32-year-old woman who doesn't wash her face and brush her teeth at night. And that's kind of weird. Like, you're, <laughs> do, do your dishes. Like, you don't have someone to do your dishes for you. Do your fucking dishes. All of these things I stopped doing and I realized like, oh, I can be sad and I can do these things just for today. So I wanted to like break down the meditation thing and like make it actionable. Well, and I think your journey to getting there is also okay because grief hits in different moments. Everyone grieves in different phases. It hits people differently in different ways. So even yeah. the two guys in your household, it might hit them completely differently. Like I, and I said, poor Joe, because it has been a running theme of you scream crying for months and months and months. And Joe's just like, oh my gosh, how could I get her to stop scream crying? Like, Not to say that up. he isn't hurting himself. But yeah, yeah. and I think... When I'm, when I'm like manifesting doom as well, I think getting back to what really helped me is before I go to bed and right when I wake up, like before I move or do anything, I think of three things that I'm grateful for because it just shifts you from thinking of, oh, I have like a half an hour of getting the animals situated. I have to go work out and then I have to work for eight hours. It's like, oh my gosh, I have these four animals that love me and that I get so spoiled to endure their, you know, just changing yeah. the perspective because it is, it is easy to fall into a, oh, this is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And I, right. oh, I'm, I'm definitely still sad. Your girl's still scream <laughs> crying, but of you course. know, I'm, I, my, but, but I, I'm washing my face and I'm brushing my teeth. You know what I'm saying? And you made it's a box a spring things. mattress, which is the beginning. With a migraine. Mm. Bless you. Girl, girl. So and what's going I finished on? my video. What's going on with this movie of yours? Because you got hired to direct a movie and I yeah. heard all about it. And yeah. you told me on multiple occasions as if you hadn't told me like it was the first time ever, which I, I just, I just joined in on the excitement for you. Like it was the first time. Oh it's my gosh. Really? <laughs> it's a good friend. <laughs> 
<laughs> Never question Ryan's, Rylan's loyalty and sweetness. It's right there. That's it. Indicative of a good man right there. Um, yeah. So, you know, I've been scream crying about getting a job and like wanting to work and like all this shit and, you know, fainting in front of strangers for sympathy and just not really getting anywhere. <laughs> and then I get a call out of the blue from this guy who I wrote a movie for like five years ago that got made. And he's like, do you want to direct this movie for me? And I was like, oh, I have manifested the opportunity of my dreams. Yes. And then like I read the script and I was like, oh, no, like this ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, you know what? Just keep just keep going. Do this project because when you do your next project, it'll take the mystery out of it. Like just just do the work and mm -hmm. trust the process. And then like, I started doing the work, you know what I mean? Like I called my DP, I like was uh, thinking about breaking down the script and casting and I'm like, oh, who can I, who can I afford to bring into this project who's immensely talented and that, that will do a favor for me because you know, the budget was also non-fucking existent. Like I literally, mm -hmm. he's like, well, how low will you work for? And this is, a pro this is a pattern in my life. Like for the longest, I would be like, I'm free. If it's my dream, I'll do it for free. Mm. And it's like, no, I stopped doing that. You got to in my a head certain and were extent. Like, yeah. I right. Mean, if, um, Steven Spielberg calls and he says, Lizzie, will you direct this movie? I'm not going to pay you. I'm going to do Steven Spielberg's fucking movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Steven didn't call. This was not <laughs> Steven Spielberg. So <laughs> I like, I was like, I, I need to, I need to not work for free. So I was like, I'll just do it for my rent. But to be completely honest, the amount of labor that goes into directing a feature film is more than a month's worth of rent. And all and of your mental capacity, honestly. Exactly. Exactly. So it's like the opportunity cost. Like I have all these other things going. I was like, I can close out these accounts and then have the space free, but I can only give him nine days. I'm like, I'm working through all this. I'm making these choices. Like I have a visual in my mind of what the film's to look like. I know how to put it together. I know how to work on a budget, like all this stuff. And then every time I like made a decision, he would fight me on it tooth and nail. And I was just like, you know what? I don't have the additional capacity to argue with you when you already don't comprehend the amount of favors and services you are getting for basically free. So I said, I opened my hands up to the universe and I said, God, you tricky bitch. Are you trying to teach me the same lesson again? And God said, yes. And I said, nice try, motherfucker. And then I called and quit. And what did he do? Um, he, he got, I think he gets it, you know? Yeah. When every single decision is, is met with a 45-minute argument, I think it's pretty fucking mm. clear that things aren't going to work out. And at, at one point, he's like, I'm not trying to fight. And I was like, right, I get that. I need you to understand that I'm frustrated right now because I feel like I'm trying to convince you not to eat rat poison. <laughs> like, that was the level of... And absurdity to the if situation if you're putting your name on it if you're yeah. doing it as somewhat of a favor as a resume builder if it's not in well, line with what yeah it wouldn't even build my resume the credit would be useless i've made bad movies bad movies don't change lives and if making bad movies only teaches you how to make bad movies and it's also like i'm not i don't want to not pay people right so if i tell you someone's bottom line rate you pay their bottom line rate or you, know you know move saying? on. Yeah. Or, or find yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Find somebody yeah. that wants the project. And I don't want to work with anybody else. So like take the fucking favor, say thank you and move on. But he couldn't say thank you. And thank God he couldn't because that gave me a moment of pause before I got even deeper into the project and was like, oh, I can't do this. <laughs> so I quit that, which is great. <laughs> well, speaking of movies, you had finished the first draft of the Christmas movie. I have. I have. And I'm very excited to read it. It's been very busy for me. So I haven't got, I think probably tomorrow after the podcast goes live, I'll be able to sit down with a cup of coffee, enjoy what has been written for us by you. Yes. Yes. Um, but I did like get a little angry at you. There was like tension on my end at, towards oh, you. Do, do you not um, remember this? Because I was kind I of do. fuming, honestly. And oh, I was I like, tell you I've fuming. got to tell her why I'm fuming or that I'm going to be passive aggressive. And I'm never passive aggressive with you. So yeah, that's, but, when it's not a joke, you know? Yeah, go ahead. Air, <laughs> air, air your bullshit. <laughs> my grievances? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let me see if I can even find it this quickly. Yeah, go through your files. I can oh tell you off, I can tell you off, off the top of my I had exactly what it is i sent you the script you said i can piecemeal read it i can read it in a few different sessions i did and I not said, say it like that I, you said i can read a little bit here and there basically <laughs> i said don't do that 
I said, you always read a movie script in one sitting. No, it was your tone. See, this is why I have to uh, do it like this. Oh, here, I'm getting to the juice. Yeah. Here I go. Okay. Do you have time to read our script? And because I know that you've spent so much time and energy and poured your heart into this project, I don't want to disregard it. And I am excited to read it. But I was also like, my head was spinning with work. And that's fine. I literally asked, do you have time? And so I was like, here's my excuses. So I don't have a lot of time until Wednesday afternoon, but I can try to read some of it before I go to bed tonight. And you said, never read a movie in pieces, comma always do it in one sitting and it's not it my just... fault you take commas and periods as direct slaps to the face <laughs> that was another not argument we had but she was sending me aggressive periods and i was like lizzie no stop with the periods aggressive you're it's such aggressive. a crazy person you're i'm crazy. i don't care if it's gen z of me to not like the fucking periods i think they're rude if it's not because like you cannot get the diction of somebody's voice through text message and so if you're not adding like emojis which i get is over the top a period to end like a whatever sentence just feels like oh that person hates me it gives me the ick (laughs) periods give me the ick and so what i do unless it's like a sad message or like condolences or something i just hit return and start a new line instead of doing a period because i don't want people to think i hate them good for you i don't think anyone i don't think anyone really reads into the period i don't know what to say like i know that they do because i see it going viral on tiktok but it's like for real like y'all y'all getting upset over a period now and so i was upset about the way because and i know there's a lot of periods in this script i need you to know before you read it there's a period at the end of every sentence in this and that's fine and not one of them has anything to do with you (laughs) feels completely different i will tell you that it's not a text message it's a piece of work um and so i i know you didn't mean it like oh you're a fucking idiot for not knowing that you can't read a script in multiple pieces but it made me feel stupid like oh Mm -hmm. you don't know anything like you have to read a script in one sitting you fucking loser and that's how i took it in my head like that was my interpretation and i know that that wasn't you're just being like i want you to read it in one sitting so i wish you would have just been like oh i'd prefer if you could just read it all in one sitting that would be great because i you could get the whole picture in my mind previously Mm -hmm. i've read scripts in chunks because because I'm a little bit slow. I was school was never my <laughs> forte. And so yeah. I'll like read a chunk of a script and I'll process. I'll think about what I read. And then when I come back, I'm like, oh, I've internalized what was going on in that chunk. And now I'm ready to dive in again. So yeah. I just sent you back an eye roll emoji, just like that's it. And then I then you I think were doing I just I ghosted else. you. You yeah. ghosted me. So like an hour later I said <laughs> I'm sorry about my eye roll. I felt stupid the way you worded reading scripts in one sitting. I took it as I'm stupid for not knowing that and have always read in multiple chunks, but I'm happy to read it in one sitting if that's your preference. I know you worked really hard on it and I'm very excited about it. (laughs) And then my response was like, literally thought nothing of any of that. Had zero thoughts about all of our exchange. I think I was just doing seven other things at the same time. (laughs) And you were just having a little meltdown privately. Mm -hmm. But honestly, so I do have to say, like, I never ever was that I I don't mansplain things. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like saying you fucking idiot. It was 100 percent me internalizing it from my own like non-success as an actor. Well, no, you also people do read scripts and people do read scripts in chunks. But I, I don't personally like that. And I know that most writers don't love that. Because what you're consuming is meant to be consumed in a single sitting. Do you know right. what I'm saying? Like uh, yeah, I'd you never... consume the movie. Well, yeah. see, this pisses Shane off about me too. Like sometimes it will be late and he'll want to start a movie. And I'm like, oh, let's start it. And he goes, well, no, you're going to fall asleep. And I said, well, then we pick it up and start it tomorrow night. And he's like, you cannot do that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I can. I do that with everything that I do. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't I? Like I don't edit videos in one sitting. I'm like... I did a really good three hours. I'm going to come back to this after I have lunch and work out, you know? Wow. You're so mentally I know it's different. stable. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I'm the same way. I'm like, well, I can't get up from this computer until I'm either blind in one eye having a migraine or done with this video. <laughs> and that's Shane too. He's like, once he starts something, he'll work for 14 hours, 15 hours. And I'm yeah. just not that kind of person. I'm like, if I'm tired, I'm going to sleep and I'll pick up this movie tomorrow. And I'll think it's just as great. <laughs> But I I will read this in one sitting. I will do it justice for you. We have to cut like 20 pages from it. And also the reason why I was like, what are you doing? Was because I wanted to read it out loud with somebody. So I was seeing if that could be you. 
Oh, okay. And then I wound up reading it out loud with my friend Shannon, which is actually why I didn't respond to your text messages because I was reading the script out loud. No, I understand. And I'm very excited to read it tomorrow. And hopefully all of you will get to see this come to life over time. Today's podcast is sponsored by Calm. And I love partnering with Calm, the number one mental wellness app to give you the tools that you need to improve the way you feel. I really want you to focus on yourself for a moment. Ask yourself how you're feeling. How are things going? If your answer is anything less than amazing, I want to help. With Calm, you can reduce stress and anxiety through guided meditations, improve focus with curated music tracks, and rest and recharge with Calm's imaginative sleep stories for both children and adults. There's new daily movement sessions designed to relax your body and uplift your mind. And if you go to calm.com slash sip, you'll get a special offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription and new content is added every week. Over 100 million people around the world use Calm to take care of their minds and Calm is ready to help you stress less, sleep more, and live a happier, healthier life. Life. Lizzie and I were talking on this podcast today about how meditation can sometimes seem intimidating to jump into, but with Calm, they lay it out for you easy. You'll be able to easily start without zero previous experience. You'll feel guided through all of it, and I promise you'll feel relaxed, rested, and recharged. So for listeners of our show, Calm is offering an exclusive 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash sip. That's C-A-L-M dot com slash sip for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash sip. Shane and I had a date this morning. Oh my God. Yeah. The man woke up at like 530 <gasps> and then he's just laying in bed and he's like, I can't sleep. And I was like, well, I am sleeping. So shut up. And then he's like, he's pulls out his phone. and I go, that's going to make you absolutely never fall to sleep. Put away your yeah. phone and like try to do some breathing exercises and fall asleep. So then I fall back asleep and the dogs do what they do in the morning and they woke me up and I, he, and he's like awake. And I said, what are you doing? And he goes, well, I haven't been able to fall asleep yet. And so then we got up and we had a little morning date. We went and had like a coffee, fa a fall coffee tour. We went to like uh, Dutch Brothers. We went to Dunkin' Donuts. We got all of their different pumpkin flavored everythings. And we just had a nice little cute date morning. And I don't think I I've ever that. had like a morning date with Shane because he's, a, he's a sleeper, you know? He's a sleepy boy like Joe. Mm -hmm. I so love that. So there we are. Just wanted to give you a quick update. But uh, in exciting news for you, are you going to reveal... The great should news. We, should we just like wait so we don't jinx it and reveal it next week when I get it? Oh, fine. That Our works. No, that loves works. With a <laughs> Come back next week. <laughs> okay, um, you your vacations. Then you had like so you have been yeah. a nonstop world traveler busy, since I've seen girl. you last. Yeah. So I left you and I went, I took that 12 hour pilgrimage to the San Juan Islands off of Washington state. Which how could it possibly take 12 hours to get to like a state above you? Two states oh my above God. you. Honest to God. So it was, uh, you know, a, a basic two hour flight and then you wait two hours for your shuttle to the ferry and then you wait two hours for the ferry and then you get on the ferry. Uh, it was an hour and 20 minutes to the ferry on the shuttle. Mm -hmm. Then you wait for an hour for the ferry and then you get on the ferry and the ferry is another hour. And then you have to get off the ferry and get on a shuttle to the hotel. And it, it literally so you're my me door to hotel room, 12 hours. You're telling me the people's wedding that this was have done that prior to the wedding. And they thought this is fine to have all of our guests do this and Honestly, for us to do this again. I get why they did because it was so beautiful and it's such a nice like community wedding vibe. You know what I mean? Like everyone's mm -hmm. there. And surprisingly, I know that they only I know like only three people declined their invites. Wow. So everybody they invited came and it's such a beautiful island. Like we're going back. Really? We loved. Yeah, we loved it. We just we made a mistake and we went the day before we should have made it two days worth of travel so people who knew left on thursday and then you know got to the fairy town thursday night and then just took the ferry on friday so it's like not that big a deal that way but right. the way we did it and they like rented a car like all these things and it's like in my mind i was i didn't know how much it was going to be to rent a car so i thought it would be cheaper to do the shuttle situation and it's like probably wasn't because it was close to $350 to take all the shuttles. Wow. Yeah. But you guys had a good time? We had the best time. Joe was like sitting in the audience like crying and like looking at me like, I love you. And I was like, I gotta take this motherfucker to weddings all the time. Like it was <laughs> wow. so fun. So you guys yeah. are wedding people. Oh, we're wedding people. You have to get married. 
I think I'm that's not, what I texted you. I was like, you got to get married. You're like, you have to be a really close friend of mine for me to like want to come enjoy your wedding because it just is a lot to go to people's weddings. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I get that. I also, I mean, I don't know. Like Joe and I aren't the, like Joe's very social. So like sometimes I can see Joe talking to someone and I'll just be like, I'm going to go over there and do introvert things by myself, <laughs> you know? And like the wedding was so close to our hotel room that like I kept going back to the room for, and like, touching my face up or like getting whatever I wanted to get, like changing my shoes, then going back to the wedding. Like I never felt the burden of like social. on Right. And it's fun. I mean, it's just a big party. If you can just get yeah. there in your head that it's just a big party, then it is fun. It just, it, yeah. I know like it's a lot of money for whoever's wedding it is. It's yeah. it like a lot of pressure. And then, I mean, I like well, it when the sh- ceremonies are short. Yeah. Well, Shannon's family just seems like the poster children for mental stability because they are so even keeled and like chill and like normal and funny and no, like I was more nervous than Shannon. I was like, are you shitting blood? She's like, no. And I was like, oh, me me neither. (laughs) Are you nervous? She's like, no. I was like, oh, me neither. But if I faint, don't call an ambulance because I don't have health insurance. Like, <laughs> um, but they're like, and they're meant to be, you know. Jordan loves her. She loves him. He's super funny. He practices like, um, maybe I shouldn't talk about this online. It's not my business. Okay. Well, it's very they... funny though, and I'd like to share it. <laughs> <laughs> but I shouldn't. You can't. I don't think so. It's like rude to do that, right? Fine. I mean, I don't know. It's up I'll to you. I'll tell you privately because it's very funny. <laughs> okay. What? Well, and then tell us what, then you went to San Diego. Oh, and then I went to San Diego to see my baby. She's big as fuck. That bitch about to be walking and shit, going places. She's going bat, 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 bat. Super cute. Bop, we bop, took her to bop. the, yeah, we, she's saying data too, which is just fucking rude when she has two moms <laughs> and we... I'm surprised she's not saying Ryland. <gasps> I could, I would die. She said, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably watching right now. Hi, Lily. Oh Hi, Lily gosh. May. I love you. ZZ loves you. <laughs> I'm trying to get her to call me ZZ. Why? It's easier than Lizzie. It's okay. two of the same things. Do you want, do you want to look at these alts and um, plug any of them or should we just get right into iced tea? Oh, we need a new intro. Oh, yeah. I see that every episode we post. One we of do. the first comments is like, you need a new yeah. intro because you're not in the shed. And I was like, but to be fair, this year we were in the shed for quite yeah. a while. Um, but I hear what I- you're saying. I hear you. And yeah, I think one of these Should times we- when you stay overnight, we need to get some footage of us doing like Colorado things. Yeah, hell yeah. But also because like I'm 30 pounds heavier than when we did that <laughs> intro. And when I watch it, I'm just like, Ugh. Um yes <laughs> okay <laughs> let's do ice Anything tea else? dude okay let's get I into mean, well i like young blood i don't know if he's famous or not but you would not think that i would like someone like young blood because it seems like he's trying really hard to be like mm-hmm. alternative rocker guy love the guy love young blood can you Tattoo. give me an example of one of his songs yeah i played it for you in the car in colorado oh you were like okay. i like what he's doing with his voice here right i wish he would just keep doing that with his voice <clears> there <throat> <laughs> that that was your that was your review is he, um, like do people know who he is i don't know I sound he... off in the comments below i don't know if people know who young blood is and you discovered him through tiktok i discovered him through tiktok which is why i'm like he must be i know he's got money behind him he's like touring and he's like got big shit going on in japan but like who doesn't you know i'm back to hating tiktok i just can't consume it i hate we, it we know and okay. we know <laughs> moving you, on you, you, you we, he tiktok's your toxic lover bro i just wish none I of us want it. this for you i know i wish i liked going watching to. it i can't even like watching it i hate it i hate yeah. it yeah okay. and i wish you liked sushi Same. um <laughs> uh oh this is important shane posted on instagram the other day him doing all those different hairs uh-huh does lady shane look like me or am i psychotic well are you <laughs> I think you did I, like, send I, me a picture as well. Because when I looked at it, I was like, is am I? Because for a minute, I was like, is that me? Um, oh, or is it just a ginger? I think it might just be the ginger, which is kind of, um, you know. What? What would you call that when you're Sexy? saying somebody looks alike just because they have red hair? Gingerist? Yeah, that's gingerist. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I don't know. I'll throw the photo up and you guys can determine for yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. 
Kind and of. Then, <laughs> we already covered the fact that I'm quitting coffee. Okay. Um, Let's move on to iced tea. The queen's dead. Yeah. Rest in peace, lady. Um, I don't, I'm, and I'm not going to pretend I know a lot about the royals, but <laughs> it seems very, I don't know if somebody it's polarizing as fuck. is very, yes, like it's very much so like NBC, ABC, all these people are doing these huge tributes and talking about the queen as she's the queen, but then you open yeah. social media and you feel like, oh, if you even say anything about the queen, you are You're, a horrible person because yeah. of things she had supported. And I'm like, but if all these, so like, are the mainstream networks like out of, I just, it, it's hard for me to wrap my ha head around what yeah. is what on social media because yeah. everyone's mad at everything. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, there's valid reasons to be upset with the monarchy in general and the queen being the, you know, top of that pyramid scheme is kind of a big deal. You know, I think we could liken the monarchy to a pyramid scheme in that we hate the person at the top because they ruin the lives of those at the bottoms by just taking everything from them and then... Uh, you know, it, making the people beneath them take everything from the people beneath them. And it's just sort of like this awful process where at the bottom row of people is just, you know, fucked. By... Was the hate for them around prior to her death? Because it seems like all I ever heard is like the U.S. celebrates the royals. Like you right. wouldn't believe. Like you turn on entertainment news or you go mm -hmm. to an entertain entertainment gossip site and it is royal central. And I've always been like, why are we so royal obsessed in the U.S.? I've never given a shit, but I believe a big part of it uh, right now being so dramatized or not dramatized. Like I'm not trying to call these people drama queens, but like the, the reason why it's so loud right now that people don't like them is because her death is like a spotlight on the issues. It's an mm -hmm. opportunity to be outspoken about the problems within the monarchy because it's also this period of change, right? And Elizabeth was a, a, a duty bound woman who gave a shit about the position and the monarchy and upholding whatever the firm, I don't know what they call it, but she sacrificed a lot for this position her entire life. Right. And then, you know, King Charles steps in and we all hate Charles because he cheated on Diana, who was the people's queen or right. princess, whatever. And uh, he's particularly fucking gross. Like back in the 90s, they leaked all these videotapes of him talking nasty to his current wife, Camilla. And it's just like, who wants to fuck that? I don't know. I've never been into him. He's gross. Regardless, we know that's not you're why we hate him. It's for the visuals of the royal boys. Well, they're hideous. And <laughs> the, but they're all, like also like let's not it's not about their looks. It's the it's it's the bigger problem is colonialism and slavery and racism and all of the Nazis. Like it's it's a deep fucking worst things in the world collide within the royal family that's why people are pissed off right i'm not saying they're not valid i just no. it, i just was it's interesting to see these huge publications celebrating the life of and then opening instagram and seeing some of the things that um the monarchy has done that are yeah horrible and tragic so that, I yeah, mean. every every coin's got two sides i was specific the one thing that i fell for was that they were gonna put her corgis down what there was a hoax or something going around online saying that they were gonna put her corgis down because she didn't want them to live past her and i was like well looks like i'm going to london and getting in some real shit to save some <laughs> corgis right now because just like the orcas those corgis will be freed and if it's the last thing i do so um that's not real nobody needs to go get the corgis the corgis are fine they're not going to clog the corgis or so you think no i'm sure they went to yeah. one of the royal families okay so you wanted to talk about john ham's penis again yeah can't escape it it's just like insane so he addressed the rumors that he prefers going commando because everyone knows he was the trailblazer for these tiktok dick wigglers like if you're thinking well, of let's, let's not compare john ham's huge penis to Lil huddy dancing like a fucking weirdo in his room by himself well i'm They're just totally saying if we're talking things. penis visuals through pants I'm saying John Hamm seemed to be doing it the biggest, the first. Yes, yes, yes. But it's so, not related to TikTok dick wiggling. They're different words. You know what I mean? So he was on Howard Stern, and I guess that he said, who doesn't wear underwear? And I feel so attacked. And I also am calling you fucking got, What am bullshit. I, Ryland Adams? <laughs> I feel... 
I'm like BS. This if you I'm gonna put the asset on the screen because it's crazy. Like there's he's like I wear cotton briefs and it's like no I would not be able to see your like I understand like I wear boxers sometimes too. Dickhead. You can see like his actual fucking dick and there's just no way so he must <laughs> just enjoy fucking with the world which is why i liken it to tiktok dick wiggling because they're doing dick wiggling to get a certain amount of attention on the internet and yeah. this is no different because if he didn't like the attention he would have seen the first paparazzi photo gone viral and then he would have stopped doing it but he has a huge dick and he likes showing it off so i wish he would just admit to doing so <laughs> You think he can help it? Would you want John Hamm to start tucking before he goes out in public in case the paparazzi's around the corner? And no, he's like, these oh, are no. very I'm gonna tight hurt pants. Small, I'm going to hurt growers' feelings. Lizzie, oh, you, no. you get offended when I'm wearing sweatpants without underwear. And because those are very loose. I don't want to see loose. your dick, bro. I'm a, with you one-on-one -on -one in person, homie. And I'm saying those are very loose. If I were to wear <laughs> tight pants with fucking no underwear and go out in public... <laughs> It's like, he knows it's what assault. he's doing. It's visual assault. It's visual assault. Unless there's people that like it and love it. So whatever. I mean. I call him a liar. <laughs> I think he's a fucking liar. I don't know what that what man does. What if that's does. not even his dick he's packing? You don't even know what he does. <laughs> he's an actor. <laughs> On what? Oh my God. So I don't care. He... Get mad <gasps> at me for not knowing John Hamm. I don't care. And I, I know, I know enough. <laughs> and that's that he shows his big tick off in public. Okay. <laughs> Alexandra Daddario nipplegate during white Lotus win at the Emmys. Pretty old mm -hmm. news, but let's talk about it. Uh, so I guess she won and she's wearing a dress. What? The, here's the deal back on the dick showing shit. It's like, Dude, I get it. Like, nipples are non offensive or whatever, but it's like, I don't really want to walk around with my fucking nipples showing. And it's like, sure, all power to you, ladies, for having your nipples out. But it's like, men aren't the only ones who are made uncomfortable by it or aroused. Like, I'm uncomfortable seeing nipples. I don't want to <laughs> see your fucking nipples, K fucking Kendall or Florence see, or fucking Alexandria. We know you guys have great titties. In San Diego, do you know how many nipples I saw through shirts, Ryland? And all of them are fucking pierced? I don't need to know that about a stranger. So I think there's a difference. One being, like, if you're just wearing a tank top without a bra and I can, like, see the outline of your nipples, like what Jennifer Aniston would do in Friends, I think I'm that's fine. I'm talking about color. I'm talking about okay. seeing color. And that's, but I'm likening the no bra to being able to see to John Hamm. It's not yeah. like he's wearing a sheer pant where you can actually visualize or see like the color of the dick, but the Florence pews and the other people that are putting their nipples out, they want attention for showing their nipple, which if they want to free their nipple, go for it. Like all power to you. But I do think it's different. You know, it's like, I want you to see my nipples and make comments about them. Yeah. And I don't like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not into so, it. Um, and for a second, I just can't get on board with white Lotus. I've tried so many times. Oh, me I'm like neither. four episodes in yeah. and Every second of it, I'm, like, begging myself to, like, start liking it. I'm like, oh, you yeah. know what? It's just going to hit me any second. Then I'm just yeah. going to be like, this is why everyone's loving this. But yeah. I would turn it on. I even tried last night before I even knew this was going to be a topic of yours because it won so many Emmys. And yeah. I was so bored. And I love Sydney Sweeney. I love Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah. I love Connie Britton. The cast yeah. is incredible. And their yeah, work I is phenomenal. I love so Steve bored. Zahn. Steve Zahn is such a fucking character, a little rodent. Like, I can't even handle how deep he gets into these characters and how much on screen he comes across as vulnerably real. Can't watch the show. Don't care. I just wish I knew what it was that I'm missing. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe it's taste. Maybe we're tasteless. We're out maybe. there. I'm like, I'm like, I watched all of Emily in Paris. Hated it too, though. <laughs> Watched every episode, hated it. Well, that's the thing. Like, even like with that uncoupled show, like it's obviously like a kitschy show, but it it kept my attention throughout. Where White Lotus, I'm just like, oh my gosh, get to something. Okay, yeah. so Kim and Ray J. Uh huh. Ain't that some shit? I mean, I feel like it's not, which is why nobody cares. Like, I know people yeah. are writing about it, but even and I do feel for Ray J because even if everything he's saying is the truth, which I feel that it is. I yeah. just don't think that it's going to affect the Kardashians in any no. way because people enjoy watching the Kardashians. I do think that what he's saying is probably valid, which is Chris had a hand in it. They both knew what they were doing. They recorded it to release the tape. And yeah. 
he was texting Kim. What I would be mad about if I was Ray J is feeling gaslighted by Kim so far after the fact. The storyline that they did bring into the first season of the Hulu show to kind of bring it full circle to the first season of their Kardashian mm-hmm. show on E! was the sex tape. And he really did, she really did paint the picture as though like Ray J and his team were going to leak it again. But in the text, mm-hmm. in the DMs between Kim and Ray J, Kim's like, you just have to trust the storyline. We're going to mm-hmm. paint a good picture your way. And he's like, no, you didn't do that at all. I started watching the episode. I was playing along to go along because I was like, yeah, let's put this to bed in a nice way. And she completely didn't do that. And she did it with mm-hmm. a smile on her face. And then it's like, yeah, I would well, feel gaslit too. she did it with fake too. tears in her eyes. <laughs> fake tears in her eyes, but yeah. then talking to him on DMs, just like, keep yeah. it calm. Like, yeah. keep it cool. Keep collected. it pushing. And then she yeah. is so famous and has so much weight in Hollywood and people are so entertained by her and she's already famous for a sex tape. This isn't going to be damaging to her in no. any regard. But what bothers me in a way is she doesn't even have to address it she gets to stay silent she doesn't ever have to acknowledge it she just gets to move along like nothing happened why ray j feels like his whole life is uprooted and then to poke him again on the late show after he feels chris manufactured this helped with the contracts pushed this forward and listen i love the kardashians and i'm still gonna watch the premiere in a couple of days when it airs i and it's not gonna affect them at all i just like i do feel for ray j a little bit Oh, yeah, because they're also painting him as like a villain, like being so vague about why he has this and all that stuff in the public narrative makes it seem as though he filmed her without her consent, which is, you know, a version of assault. And all like it's just it's fucked. You both agreed to it. You're both willing participants. Everybody consented to it to the degree of which contracts exist. Don't call a man a fucking abuser if he's not abusing. Just don't do that. It's a big deal. And then to film a a second take and to say like, oh, she looks better in this take. And he has the contracts that they both did. Like, I'm shocked that it's not more of a scandal than it is, because I feel if it wasn't the Kardashians, it would be career ruining for another person. Someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I want to know. Is the lie detector test guy from James Corden the same guy that you know? Yes, (gasps) Yes, we've <gasps> used him multiple times, and he does everyone's. And while he is a legit polygraph lie detector guy, he also knows entertainment is number one. You know, yeah. like he knows when he's on a production, he knows how to make a moment. You can use the moment or not if you want. Um, he it will show you the facts, and you can use the facts if you want, but he also will do what the production wants if asked. You know what I mean? Right. So, so he'll lie. Yeah. You think he lied? I don't on James know. Corden? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Chris is. I. I don't. I also don't think polygraph tests are all in You're all. You're adding accurate. a syllable. It's poly. Oh, well, polygraph. Polygraph test. Yeah. I don't think they're a hundred percent accurate. And I. I would say Chris, if anyone could keep it cool enough to pass. Yeah. Um, some interrogation because I, I do I think, think Chris she, lives on beta blockers. She has she's like a Kellogg's. mastermind of her generation. Like she has created and maintained fame for her family, which while impressive, I don't know that I could, I don't know. I don't know that I could do what she does, which is why they say the devil works hard and Chris Jenner works harder, you know? Oh yeah, she does. But good for her and good for the family for doing what they continue to do. You know, I mean, yeah, they have what they want, which is attention and fame. And are you going to get the Chris Jenner by Kylie palette? The second one, the martini one? No. Okay. <laughs> are you? No. They, I was honestly annoyed Not by how Shane much promotion <laughs> was shoved in my face by it. Like I, and I just, I don't wear makeup unless I'm getting in drag. So, yeah. but it was like overkill on the promotion, you know, oh, I loved and I it. couldn't escape it. I loved it. Um, Okay. You put in the Scream star, teased the upcoming sixth installment of the franchise. Um, She said it's going to be 20 times more mortifying. Doesn't that seem like the wrong use of that word to you? I mean, you're talking to somebody who uses every word wrong. Right, but like even you, doesn't it feel wrong? (laughs) Right? Well, I mean, I think she just means like scary, disturbing, haunting. Right, which is not what mortifying means. What does mortifying mean? Look it up. Okay, well, are you going to talk while I do this? I No, this is all I wanted to talk about. I just think it's a funny choice of the word. She's like, it's embar- like it's super embarrassing. Like, oh, the yeah, it causes great embarrassment or shame. I guess I thought mortifying was different than it actually is, too. 
Yeah, so that's weird. So yeah, it's, it's more weird. the situations are more embarrassing than ever. Well, then, her, well, her backing it up says it's awful because you all you see how in a city like New York, everyone is kind of doing their own thing, and someone is screaming for help, and no one will come for their help. I don't think she knows what mortified means. I mean, I don't either, so I'll give her that. Like, I would have thought that <laughs> made sense to me until I looked up the defin- definition of mortifying. Oh, um, I saw, when I was looking for articles, I was like, full stop. What? And it's also <laughs> like after this woman. Like, no offense, like, honestly, was um, the weakest link of that film. She played the big sister. Do you remember that big speech she had in the hospital about, mm-hmm. like, my dad was Sydney's fucking first killer boyfriend, not Stu. What was his name? What was that? Jenny character? Ortega should have been the star. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, and now this woman's, come, she's replacing Nev Campbell, and they're not paying Nev Campbell. That, you know what's mortifying? That. 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 I will say I am excited to see Hayden Panettiere because in a comeback, I think she's a wonderful actress, but she has really yeah. had a crazy road. I think she had really dealt. Have you, did you see all the headlines that she like came back on people? Yeah. Um, so I am very, I'm rooting for her and I hope that she's I'm great. I'm always in rooting it. for Hayden. Same. Love her yeah. so much. Um, I love are her. you the asshole? Me? That's what you said. Well, you said I am the asshole, but you can't right. stop laughing. Well, so you saw that Post Malone ate shit on stage, yeah? Yeah, and I re- the angle I saw was too zoomed out. I rewatched the fall like six times, and I yeah, still can't sure what determine he- what was the cause of the fa- Oh, he fainted? <laughs> no, he didn't faint. I'm just, I'm laughing because I'm thinking about it, and that's why I'm the asshole. <laughs> just- and then I tried watching his like 20-minute... <laughs> he ate 20 it minute- so hard. <laughs> it is, yeah. I, I mean, was he fine? I tried watching his 20-minute yeah. long explanation about it, and it was just so slow-paced and boring that I was like, I feel for the man for falling, and I hope he's okay, but I could not, wa- I could not endure the explanation. You know? Yeah, I mean, I just I feel bad because and it's like and it's a gnarly situation to be in because like God, man, what a nightmare to fall that publicly that hard and he's gasping. Great. I mean, great publicity. Like, I mean, yeah, it went on for they cut the music and then it just goes on and on and on and on. Your boy. <laughs> oh man, and it's like, and but I can't fine, help though, it. Right? This is my yeah, he's fine. But this is okay. he was on stage the next night. But it's like this is my response every time someone falls, and it's like I mean not because it's hilarious. Yes, yeah, I mean it's hilarious. Is Demi still doing her tour? Why did she fall? I don't know. I, I don't know why I started thinking about Demi Lovato. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I don't know. Do we? You want to do movie reviews? Yeah, I want to know. Did you see that one about the girl who goes on the stupid radio tower and can't get down? No, I've been waiting to see that. It wasn't at the movie theater we like to see. Um, so we're waiting until the end of this month when it comes on video on demand. Did you go see it? Yeah. <gasps> and? It's awful. It's the stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. I mean, but is it suspenseful? Like, is it fun? Because there's a no, lot of those it's movies. it's where... stupid. It's insanely stupid. You sit there the whole time like, oh my God, these bitches are dumb as fuck. So Why it doesn't are these live so up to the trailer. Yeah. I thought the trailer was great. Did you, did you go see it because you liked do the trailer? No, I just saw oh. it because we had it at home. And it had like a 70% Rotten Tomatoes rating. Huh. Mm-hmm. I'm going to see it. I, even though you said it was a flop, fun, I'm going to watch it at home. I'm glad I won't see it at a theater, though, now that I you heard You should see your... Barbarian instead. I've seen it. I told oh, you, you I saw that, and you didn't, I didn't reply. Know. I literally, no, I'm, I told you, and me. you glazed over it. Because I obviously I, didn't see it. Because <laughs> Shane did force me to go and see that. I don't like seeing scary movies, but it's I so fun. loved it. It's I loved so it. Fun. because. Not only is it like, it's just, it's at the scary meter that is good for me, but then it also like takes multiple different turns that take you out of the scariness and just Mm -hmm. drives a good Mm storyline. And I just, I couldn't have loved it more for what it was. I walked out and I was like, wow, I like thoroughly enjoyed myself. I didn't exactly know it was going to happen. And once, um, who's the, the guy, the actor in it, the like, yeah, loved his like whole character arc. I just, oh. It was fantastic. I Yeah, I really loved it. I thought it was so fun. I thought it was perfectly stupid. Like, I was laughing, but I was scared. And it was great. Justin Long and, does a good job of playing a guy who's alone. You know what I mean? And ah, Dude! <laughs> he plays on such... I, I love how it, like, plays on culture today. And yeah. then shows... I mean, I don't want to ruin the movie for yeah, you. Yeah, don't ruin I, it. Don't fucking I, ruin it. I, I won't it. ruin it. I won't be a spoiler. And then um, when we get to TV, uh, did you start selling the OC? Come on, Lizzie. No, I haven't had time, bro. But why'd you give the disgusted face? You liked getting into selling Sunset. I know. I just haven't had time. Okay. I love I it. I have time. 
I love it. And the drama is even more so real. Like it felt real. And I was telling my aunt, cause she also watches Selling Sunset and we kind of converse about it. So I was like, oh, you got to get into the OC one because the drama, like I feel like on Selling Sunset, it evolved over time to like, oh, the show has to be dramatic. So it seems like everyone's trying to get their dramatic screen time. Whereas mm-hmm. on this show, it felt like a lot of it was real. And it turns out now that the show's over. So one of the realtors kind of playing parallel to like how Chriselle was dating Justin Hartley. Justin Hartley was this big This Is Us star. They got a divorce. Um, one of the guys, they have guys on selling the OC. He was married He was married to Britney Snow. And all of the realtors are on the show are flirting all the time. He's uh-huh. like a very good looking, charismatic guy. And it, it was like too far almost. And yeah. now it's come out weeks after the show aired that they got a divorce. And yeah. I'm like, it had to be due to the show, the response to the show. I don't think she likes that he's on a reality show. I don't think he, she likes how he was not only being flirted with all the time, but kind of entertaining Flirty. the flirting. Yeah. Um, so very fascinating on a lot of fronts. And then I wanted to know, like you brought up your beef with the guy that does the rehearsal m- on multiple occasions. I just want to know oh, why you have such I don't, a disdain I don't for know him. him, dude. I don't, I don't really know him. Oh. I just like, it's like, it's like English accents or like British accents. Like I just can't fuck with it. I don't think he has one. I don't care. It's like he is like for me, like my brain shuts off when English accents. I'm just like, oh, I can't hear that. I think it's so I hear like I hear Nathan for you and I'm like, oh, I can't hear that. And so this is his new iteration of a show, which is he creates rehearsals for big scenarios in people's lives. And it just Shane liked it in a way that like we both liked it. But Shane thought it was like funny because every time you think it couldn't get crazy, like more weird. He yeah. gets so much more weird at the expense of hundreds of thousands of dollars. And mm-hmm. every time I'm I'm entertained, but I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what? And Shane thinks it's so funny. And I'm like, I get why it's funny, but it doesn't make me laugh out loud. But I'm still entertained. So Shane's like, you take everything See, too serious. Well, that's my problem with it. Because I do think I take him a little bit too seriously. And I feel as though sometimes when he does these stunts, it's at not just a financial cost, but at the cost of a human being. Because at the core of this are real people, right? Yes. And there's only, I think, one person that's actually maybe affected. I think in the end, most people, it does wrap around to something that is heartwarming in their lives. The outcome is for the better, although Mm -hmm. he is manipulating situations. And that's why I enjoyed it, because it's a mind fuck on multiple levels. And then I think he does, towards the end of this, realize that what he's doing might not be the most morally right so it's interesting because they have announced another season is coming so it's like is he what's it going if he kind of had this aha moment what's the next season of this going to be Um, i'd I'd need a big aha moment because i'm i'm not terribly interested in watching someone be the butt of a joke and not know it for an hour you know what i mean like that that makes me very fucking uncomfortable and i'm just like can't do this it's just like i can't enjoy sea (laughs) world Now all I can focus on is that my upper lip is so small. Needs to be small. flipped. Yeah. Yes. It's all <laughs> I can go, think baby. about. Let's go, baby. I'm taking you to Kelly. She's going to make it right. No, your upper <laughs> lip is beautiful. I'm being an asshole. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, we have gorgeous. some really good advice submissions, but I think I want to give them like time. the the time okay. they deserve. Yeah. And you'll be here on Sunday. Next We're going to film a oh. couple more episodes. Well, yeah next week we'll be together we're gonna film a couple more episodes i think we'll save these juicy questions because i think they really hit on some things that will hit home for a lot of people including us personally i think we can work through some of our own problems (laughs) with other people's problems so i'm just sobbing (laughs) um i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the podcast if you want to follow us on social media we're at the sip official we're also uh we have our own social media accounts um lizzie has a vlog channel she posts vlogs every tuesday so one went live just yesterday i have a vlog channel i just made over a space in our house stunning gorgeous beautiful check it out and we love you so much we'll see you next week goodbye and And that's that's the the sip (sighs) we were on the money on that one (laughs) 